What's up, everyone? For this week's challenge, we asked the question... What makes something right or wrong? Now, the video is from the British Humanist Association, and then they give their answer as humanists. Humanists do not look to any god for rules, but think carefully for themselves about what might be the best way to live. Okay, now you'll have to go and watch the rest of, it, of the video for yourself. Um, and when you do, you might feel like I did. Uh, where do you start with this? Uh, I mean, we could, we could do a one-hour response video. Of course, we don't want to do that because you don't want to sit there for an hour listening to me. And I don't want to sit here recording an hour of me speaking. Okay, so we're going to have to try and break this down, boil it down um, to kind of some key things here. But I would encourage you to check out the STR blog on this and look at the responses. We had some great responses uh, from some people in the comments section. I'll mention uh, James, uh, Wisdom Lover, Ryan, Tanner, uh, Anna, Anna Colley. Uh, they had some really good responses to this. A little more thorough than maybe we can do in a five-minute video. But I think the first thing that we want to do with a, a, a challenge like this is offer some clarifications. we got to make sure that we're on the same page here. And so... Uh, I think we're going to need to make a distinction up front, and I've just learned this, I think, through experience, is that we're going to have to distinguish between objective and subjective, because I find there's a lot of confusion on this. When we say something is uh, an objective moral truth, that just means that it's true whether anyone believes it or not. It's nothing about the subjects uh, that that ground the truth of it. It's something about the object, this thing that's external to me. And so if it's something is objectively true, it's true whether anyone believes it or not. Subjective means it's, it's grounded in the subject. It's true for the person speaking, true for the subject. So it's grounded in the preferences of a subject. So it's not out there in the world, it's in here in me. Okay, so we got to be clear on the distinction because uh, I think uh, the, well, one of the things I'd want to clarify, the, the video mentions that for the religious person, th uh, morality never varies from situation to situation. And I, if I understand correctly, I think that's wrong. That's not what, what we mean when we say objective morality, that therefore mor there, there's just a, nothing from the situation, nothing from the circumstances informs our moral views on something. Of course not. No, uh, we think there are these objective moral principles. And what moral principles get played in a particular situation does vary from situation to situation. So, for instance, uh, the theist might hold a view that it is wrong to, to lie. It's wrong to be dishonest. Okay, uh, And we would say that's objectively true. Uh, now, the theist might also hold a moral view that it is wrong to kill innocent people without proper justification, right? You can't kill people just for the fun of it. And so we hold these two moral views. Now, there might be a situation, classic situation, where those moral views compete. And so you might have to lie to protect the life of someone who's innocent. Of course, the example is the Nazis uh, knocking at your door, okay? Well, it's, th that doesn't mean in that situation, well, we, we, we can't tell a lie. Uh, because there's this this moral principle that just binds us that we we you know we're stuck with. No, the the situation informs the moral principles, and we have two competing moral principles. It helps inform uh, what is the greater good. Now, notice nowhere did I say well because the Bible tells me so. I was practicing some moral reasoning there, and I think that's important to note because the video seems to indicate that the religious person like reads a, a religious text and then blindly follows it. God says to blow the world into many bits and pieces. I will go do that now. I think that's what sometimes humanists think religious people do. Um, of course, if you talk to a religious person, that's not what they do. Uh, uh, now, if this is contrasted with the humanist approach, which says the humanist thinks carefully for themselves about the best action. And they say things like this. We have to, the humanists, we have to be empathetic of others, respect the rights and wishes of others, consider particular situations, weigh out the evidence, and think about how your choices affect others. Yes, I agree. That's, that's actually common ground. And if you talk to the theist, we're going to say, yeah, these are considerations as well. 
We we don't just say, here's the rule, God said it, uh, I'm, I believe it, that settles it. Okay, there's some Christians who say that. Um, but that's not the uh, process of moral reasoning for the believer. Yes, God's commands do come into play, but that doesn't mean we don't do any reasoning about this. So we, we do all those things that, that, uh, that you just said. Uh, so we're in agreement. And now, of course, here's a second distinction is, is distinguishing between knowing and grounding. No argument that the atheist uh, you know, can't know morality. Absolutely, we think the atheist, the skeptic, the unbeliever, the believer, every human being has the ability to know the truth about uh, morality. Okay, So I think that my atheist friends can know what is right and what is wrong. The, the issue here, the key issue is grounding. I got to say it again and again and again. It's grounding, grounding, grounding. Where do these things come from? If, if they are objective, if they're objective moral principles, where do they come from? If they're objective moral values and duties, where do they come from? What is the best explanation for their existence? This is the question of metaphysics, not epistemology. Can the skeptic know moral truth? Yes. Can they ground objective moral truth? The argument is no. Now, okay, here is the main claim of this video. But ultimately, morality comes from us, not from any god. It is to do with people, with individual goodwill and social responsibility. Ideas of freedom, justice, happiness, equality, fairness, and all the other values we may live by are human inventions. And we can be proud of that as we strive to live up to them. Okay, so morality, good and evil, right and wrong, are merely human inventions. They're just human inventions. Now, the only kind of argument I think I saw in the video was pointing to our closest relatives, pointing to uh, you know, the animal kingdom, saying, hey, we see this stuff in the animal kingdom, we see cooperation, they flourish. Hey, same thing with us. Well, there's a couple problems with that. Number one, uh, you're simply describing behavior from animals. And when you describe it, you can't also prescribe it. You can't say, hey, this is what animals do. Therefore, we should do that. You can't get an ought from an is. Okay? So description is going to help us with prescription, what we should do. Uh, and, of course, you can give lots of examples of cooperation with the animal kingdom, but we can give a lot of examples of, of things that I think we would take to be immoral. So let's look at the lions, for instance. And the male lion who comes and takes over a female pride, what does he do? He kills all the... Uh, you know, baby lions that are not his. Okay, are we supposed to prescribe something from that situation as well? So, I mean, there's a host of problems with that. Okay, so in terms of reason, that's the only reason I think I saw in there for, for why they think this is a human invention. But then I think I would, I would also want to want to say this. Um, I would want to ask a couple questions here. Is it good, is it right to be empathetic? Is it right to respect others? Is it right to do the least harm? Is it right to be kind? Is it right to be considerate? Is it right to be unselfish? Is it right to be fair? Is it right to practice equality? Is it right to practice justice? Is it right to give people freedom? Now, why did I pick those particular things? Because that's all the stuff that was said in the video. It seemed that the video was assuming that these are good things. These are morally good things. Now, if they're merely human inventions, the, the, the most we could say is that these are good for us right now. These are what we prefer because morality simply ends up being a preference if it's a human invention. We prefer it at this point in time. But then that gives you no basis for saying someone else can't prefer it. And at some other time, someone else can't prefer this, like maybe go back 50, 60, 70 years, look in the, you know, the 20th century. Now, Hitler didn't prefer this. Stalin didn't prefer this. Lots of people didn't prefer this. They didn't prefer to treat uh, people equally. No, they, they actually thought we ought to treat people unequally because there were people that weren't worth as much as other human beings. 
So, uh, so it seems like the video is assuming there are these objective moral goods, but then reduces everything to mere invention. So it seems the video is contradictory. Of course, it might be just that the, the humanist position can't, uh, can't, can't live in reality. You can't maintain that there are these things that are good, but then simply say they're human inventions, that they're merely subjective. Uh, if you want to argue that they're merely human inventions, well, then you have, to, you have to follow that argument where it goes. If they're merely human inventions, well, like other human inventions, they can go extinct, they can change. They don't certainly give you much future direction. Uh, uh, you know, so there are things that human beings have created 100 years ago that, gosh, totally irrelevant now. Uh, things have radically changed. Is it, the, is it the same with morality? It seems like that's what you're indicating if you're saying they're merely human inventions. Okay, and of course, then there's a host of problems with this. This is relativism. It's relativism, and there's the, all the problems with relativism. Okay, so we've already said too much. Oh, well, not too much, but we just said a lot for what was supposed to be a short video. Uh, there's more we can say but I think these are the things that I would kind of start with. I'd want to start with some clarification, then I'd want to show with the, the problems with this kind of relativistic subjectivist ethic. Uh, if ethics is merely a human invention, we're in big trouble. And so, yeah, so I think the humanist uh, is not more rational to hold their view. And I think we've answered another challenge. All right, see you next time.